everybody. It's 614. Uh, welcome to the select board meeting November 11th, 2024. Um, let's start by saying um, thank you to all our veterans mm -hmm. for their service. Happy Veterans Day. And if you did not thank a vet today, it's still time to do so. I suggest you do. Um, with our meeting, we will go along with the open meeting law conformity rules where the agenda was posted in three places. Uh, was posted on the website and emailed to a vast number of people that request to be emailed. Yep. So we proceed with our meeting. We are taking a look at the prior meeting minutes from October 28th, 2024, that was a regular select board meeting. And I have read them over. I see no, well done, no issues with them. Frank, have you read them? I read them. Um, mm. I move that we approve them, you got that? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the next night we had a meeting as well. We were busy that week. <laughs> Uh, it was a select board informational meeting minutes, October 29th, 2024. This one was several pages long. It was a good long meeting, good long productive meeting, I would say, a lot of discussion. Um, October 29th, 2024, I move that we accept these meeting minutes. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, <coughs> part of the record. Um, I'm going to make an announcement so that um, it doesn't get lost in the shuffle later on. Um, regarding uh, the cell tower that is being applied for on the south end of town, um, there will be what is called a cell phone tower visibility demonstration. And that's going to take place this Wednesday, November 13th, from 9 in the morning until noontime. So hopefully it's nice and bright because, let me just read it for you, Vertex Towers and Bell Atlantic Mobile Systems doing business as Verizon Wireless will conduct a visibility demonstration to illustrate the location and height of a proposed wireless communication facility at 1030 Route 100, Rochester, Vermont. That's 1030-100, Rochester, Vermont. The test will raise a balloon at the location to a height of 140 feet, weather and wind conditions permitting. In the event of inclement weather, the demonstration will be rescheduled to the next weekday until conditions permit a successful demonstration. Wind is also a factor with this, so it could be bright and sunny, but if it's too windy, it won't, it won't be effective. Please check www.visidem, that's V-I-S-I-D-E-M.com after noon on the day before to determine if the balloon will be up the following day, so you have a way to check in advance. Um, if you have any questions, call Francis at area code 401-447. 8500 so um, we're just trying to get the word out in as many different uh, avenues as possible so that everyone is aware of this we don't want anyone to be left behind saying I did not know this was happening um, I read that from the Herald so it's been in the newspaper last week it's been on front porch forum and uh, we're doing everything we can to to get the word out to everyone and so that is it for our new business this evening. And so we will be moving along to departmental reports, which the top of our list is always the library. Well, let's see, we have a trustees meeting uh, tomorrow afternoon, starting at five. Uh, and the rest of the library is going along very nicely. Maya's got a lot of programs scheduled for the month. Uh, looks good. Did you say at five? Yeah, we're starting early. We have an executive session. Okay. Thing. Yeah. 
Okay, great. Um, to go along with the library, we did have uh, uh, bread loaf come over. I don't know if you knew that, but they did come over and uh, take some siding off there. Uh, I think Jeff, is Jeff online? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe he could elaborate to that. I wasn't there. I had a previous engagement, so I wasn't involved, but Jeff was there to see what was going on there, and I'm sure he'll have a different report there, so. He looks like he's ready. You gearing up? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, Jack. Um, yes, uh, Breadloaf uh, removed uh, some of the cladding, uh, uh, both below and above the uh, the midpoint line where we had that little bit of uh, flashing en entered. Uh, as expected, there is absolutely no weather resistive barrier behind the cladding. Um, there were some other surprises. Uh, there was a surprise that uh, there were very small amounts of dense pack cellulose uh, showing up on the sill. Um, there also was uh, no header on the, on the northern bearing wall above the windows. Um, and uh, there is really, there was no, I expected to see board sheathing behind the cladding on the exterior wall but there is no sheathing there, board or otherwise. So there's an, you know, when you take the cladding off, there's an open wall cavity. Um, now, because of what um, I know has happened to the interior and, I, and other things that I suspect that has happened to the interior through work with Efficiency Vermont over the years is that, um, leads me to feel that we need a weather resistive barrier, but we need one that's very open to the vapor open to the outside because we we probably have a variety of assemblies to the inside in the foundation that's that's all closed off and looks real nice. Um, but I, again, I think we have to be careful. Um, that we uh, don't prevent moisture from moving out, drying, you know, drying to the outside. Um, so I'm in the process of revising the scope of work uh, the, to get it to the select board to determine whether you want to, how you want to put it out to bid or, and proceed. Um, I am looking at this point just at the north wall. It is the most critical and the most damaged. Um, but I think that the the other two walls on that building, um, not counting the one where the addition was added, in the future are going to need uh, similar repair. Can I make a comment? Sounds like a lot of work, Jeff. Yep. <clears throat> what, was there someone else? Um, I I believe that. I think Robert um, Franks is, was trying to say something on his phone, maybe. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Kristen. Uh, uh, Jeffrey, I, I appreciate all your responsibility for the library. Uh, I think the point I made probably two years ago is that to preserve the library on the north side, there has to be probably a 20 to 25 inch uh, built probably six feet wide. There's probably 20 to 30 tons of gravel put into that. You can't go up and and uh, whether it's weather resistant materials and new clabbers, the moisture will always be sucked out of the earth. That's my comment. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, that's quite a library report this, this yeah. time <laughs> So um, we're, we're moving along. Highway department. Uh, not much going on. The, they're just gearing up for winter. Which we could see a little bit of that even tomorrow morning. Yeah, they say. Mm -hmm. Up at the higher elevations. Uh, utilities operator? Not here. Jeff, do you want to speak to the energy side of things? You're on mute, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, you're on mute. Sorry. 
No, nope. my apology. Um, the uh, municipal energy um, resilience programs implementation grant awards were supposed to be um, provided on October 25th. Um, we're still waiting for them. The state has not gotten them out. Um, I There is an execution agreement um, deadline for November 29th. Um, I would hope that if we prevail in this grant, um, that they will give us a little extra time to respond and, and reach an agreement with them. Uh, since they've uh, they're already behind uh, in in uh, announcing their awards, uh, but that that grant is uh, five up to five hundred thousand dollars per town, um, and we had the uh, town garage as well as the town office audited. Wonderful. Well, we'll sit tight, keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. Thank you. All that hard work might pay off for us. Grant updates. And um, I don't think we have anything for old business, which is on our agenda here, but I don't think that we have anything to bring forward. It was just the cell tower announcement. So public comment. Um, it is noted on our agenda. We limit it to three minutes. Um, so I have a feeling we're going to have a couple comments. No? Yes. I would like to make a comment. Mason, Mason raised his hand. So we'll be right with you, Robert. Well, thank you. Um, I was just curious how the select board uh, uh, was feeling about the, uh, the vote for the, the school purchase. One of my concerns is, is uh, the, the wording for the voters was very limited. So we purchased the building with 520 votes, but it seemed like it was unclear of where it was going next. It, does the town feel comfortable with 100% profit? Do we sell a building for $2? I don't know what, you know, from the writing of what was pr presented, we had 58 blanks, so 58 people were, didn't even know how to vote on it. And um, so I was just wondering where it goes from here. Well, the building, we don't take possession of the building until July 1st of next year. So there's no, no reason to knee jerk any of the next steps. Um, at this point in time, right now, we're missing one of our select board members. So um, I don't think that I even want to speak to that until we are all together again. And um, we'll, we'll make that determination. There's a lot of uh, moving and shaking going on at the moment. I'm sorry. A lot of moving and shaking going on at the moment. And um, we will be meeting with the uh, VHI board um, pretty soon and take it from there. But, you know, the, because the vote was a yes, we're not taking possession of the building un, until July 1st. The school will continue to heat and maintain the building throughout the winter. So there's there's a little bit of time and leeway to work out the details. And so there'll be some public I have a comment. info meetings about all oh, this? Perhaps, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> um, when the select board knows, you'll know. <laughs> I have a comment. I'd like to hear your comment, Robert. Thank you, Patty. Uh, what was the HVAC cost to heat the high school last year? Air um, conditioning and heating uh, to 58 degrees by law in Vermont. Do um, you know the cost of that? I don't believe that we do because it was it was in the school budget. The school paid for it. <coughs> well, was uh, was Stockbridge taxpayers involved with the payment of the heating oil to keep the building warm up to fifty eight degrees? Yes, they were, and they will be again this winter. Oh, okay, because they're they're not real happy about that, but. Um, with regards to the purchase of the school, the execu legal execution in July, 
uh, I believe, the town of Rochester, and kudos to everyone that voted to keep it. I'm wondering if Rochester purchased the building and not the uh, inanimate objects, including the, the, uh, the, the, the shop and anything that is not the building. That would have been include furniture, chairs, screwdrivers, vacuum, everything. So my question is, will there be an auction after the legal execution is or finished in July to open the public to, which they, they, the taxpayers own it? Um, what what goes on with everything in the shop that was been idle has been idle since Irene? which is very sad to me. Uh, so, I, you know, Rochester purchased the building. So what, there's a tractor, there's all kinds of things. Who owns that? The school would still own that, and if they determine that um, they have done some cleaning out of that school, it does not have everything that it did five years ago in the school. Um, if the school determines that they have no use for it, they'll probably let it go with the building. Um, there was also some uh, some furnishings in the building that were passed along to other school systems. Um, so it, it's up to the school to determine whether they want to um, gift us the furnishings or deal with it themselves. I think they may have... Well uh, may I add something? It's not up to the school board to determine the taxpayer's property. The school board, it, it is up to the school board to determine whether they need to ask the taxpayers what to do with the furnishings or, or what it is. It's not up to the select board. It would be up to the school board. Yeah. When, no, when I, they acquired I, I, the I building, they acquired that, but, everything in it. Well, you mentioned that things have been removed. That's per, That's that's public property. The, nothing the school be removed them. The school, this, 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 Robert. The school. The school removed. went in and, and did it. They they offered it up to other schools in the district. They had teachers come in and select different things, and they they did it. This was done over the course of five years. They've been doing it off and on to get rid of the useful materials that other schools could use. And I'm not sure how they actually went about it, but it was all through the, the district. It wasn't um, it wasn't sold to anybody. It was it was gifted to other schools or, or however they decided to depart with it. But they, they allowed teachers well, in well, different well, wait, districts. Wait, wait. Robert, just let me finish. Wait. They allowed teachers to come in and take different programs from science and stuff to add to their curriculums in their schools. And I'm not sure what the circumstances are. That's a question for the school board to let them address. But I do know that that's some of what they did. So it's all up to the school. The school has those things. Their school ownership of all the, the materials that are there. And so however they decide to distribute those is their call, not ours. Okay, so is Jamie and the uh, White River Supervisor Union involved in the decision? I'm, I don't know for sure, Robert, uh, but I would say so. I would start with the RSUD board, and if they can't answer your question, then it would go to the Supervisor Union. Well, I think that would be appropriate. You know, it's, it's just like if someone comes in to an auction and says, I'm just taking this out of here, uh, no, that's not proper. So uh, I'm sorry to hold up the meeting, but, you know, it's taxpayers' money, not the school board's money. Well, the merger defined it as all being transferred owner ownership of the whole lock, stock, and barrel to the RSUD. So it would be up to them. Um, what they decide to do with it. They owned it all, N not us. So uh, we can't answer any of these questions. So you're, uh, Patty, you're saying that the town of Rochester taxpayers did not purchase what is not the building and anyone is basically a buckshot for White River or uh, anybody to come in there and say, hey, I, I want that. It's possible. What, what, I don't understand. Well, it's under the school's discretion, Robert. That's all. 
we we don't have anything to do with no, that, I, and I'm sure that'll be ironed out before. No, I the, understand. The, the, I'll reach out to Ethan and the school board to say, hey guys, you know, you just can't go into a building and affect things that are owned by the taxpayers. Yep, it's a good question for them. I'm sure they'll have an answer. Thank you. Uh, Walter? You're welcome. <laughs> Just stopping through, huh? Okay, um, so I guess Any we have taken comments? care of business. I don't see any hands raised on Zoom. Okay. Okay, well, then I move that we adjourn. I second that. Um, no, 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 no. Hello? 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 Where's the 30 minute, where's the 30 minute comment for the public? We just had that minute. Well, there were no other comments. For 30, three minutes. No, there's three minute comment. That was him. He already did it. No, I didn't. That was on the that was on the agenda to speak about. No, I want to bring up no. Act 67 community school grants that were provided to Rochester Elementary School for $8,966.68 that in, you know, God bless Patty Harvey. She was very timely. She sent me a PDF file and this $9,000 is not represented on the spreadsheet or the PDF file that was forwarded. And we so have no knowledge this, of this, to, this that you speak of. Well, I, I confirm this today, as I promised, with the supervisory union of White River, and they con they confirmed that the Act, two, or Act tw uh, 67 Community Schools Grant provided to Rochester Elementary School for $9, basically $9,000 for ramps, decks, benches, picnic tables, hockey nets, to the Rochester skate space. Okay, it's that not... That is the number... It's not to the town. What, what, no, wait, the Patty. Town. No, that, that's the number that I, was, I reached out to Dean Mendel and uh, some guy up in... I don't know where he is, uh, Mr. whatever... They, they, they dismissed and denied me of the information. So there's $9,000 missing in the spreadsheet and the PDF file that you so kindly forwarded to me. So where, where, where uh, what, does anyone sitting there, you know, and I'm very curious as to why Dune hasn't been present for the last two select board meetings, but does anyone know what Act 67 is? Robert, this is all school business, and the the funds that you speak of did, never came through the town, so it, you would have to take it up with the school board or the supervisory union, whoever is the one that received the grant. I, we I, did not receive a I, part of that money or any of the money. So, so I just want to clarify this. Yeah, I just so clarified I it for you, Robert. We, we have no knowledge no, no, of this No, you did money. not. Kristen, Kristen, the assistant town clerk, told me that the grants that were written, the monies that were received from the grants, were put into the general fund of Rochester. So now we have nine thousand dollars floating around no, for picnic we're, tables. We're talking. You're talking about but different no. grants. This is a grant for the school. You no. said this was the what. De what the recreation committee had worked with the school and what the school decided that they wanted to contribute to the skate space area were the ramps, the picnic tables, and that's what they, they did. And they put in these extremely heavy duty picnic tables that were quite large <laughs> and pretty heavy. And the town went down and moved them over, and they had an assembly party for uh, a bunch of uh, parents that came down and put the tables together and set them up because they were extremely heavy. And um, I think that was what the school had elected to do for the skate space because they used the space so much for, their, for the kids. And that and, was a grant that the school... Well, and that Frank, was a grant I, I, that the I, school... 
And that was a grant that the school got, and where that money came from was from that grant that the school uh, attained to do that. So it doesn't so, go through so it doesn't the town. Go through the so, town and now you're saying it was the school, the school acquired the grant, but you're saying that I have to deflect or default to the uh, <clears throat> recreational committee. Where's the $9,000? It's, they it's, they bought where is, picnic tables and stuff. It, the school their, did. It's their grant, not the town. It's no, a, the school the school the, cannot buy that. The rec department of Rochester has to buy it. The not the school. But the Act sixty seven grant that you're speaking of is through the school. So they purchased it with their well, grant money. Yeah, it's well, but now, <clears throat> wow. Uh, this gets it's deeper and there. deeper. So, Julie, That's God bless you. One. I think it's just yeah. extra that they put It's in under there. corporate, private. Because it's a, it's a community Probably. school grant. So, so, the money that was received from the White River Supervisory Union for $8,966.68, now you're saying it went to the school? It came, came from, from the came school. From the school. That, <laughs> it, was, it was their grant. It was their grant. They wrote the grant to. <laughs> they applied. They, they applied the to for the for those funds. <laughs> for but, but wait a second. So you're saying that they applied for it, and the money was deposited, and what I understand went into the general fund of no. Rochester. No, no, no. Robert, we never. No, Robert. It's Kristen. Are you um, thinking of the other uh, state grant that Norm Christensen got? Yeah, from the, the state of Vermont for the fifteen thousand. That's so, well. I would, I, you know, Kristen. I, I, you know, I'm sorry, but the the PDF file that sense. Patty shared with me does not reflect the elementary, the Rochester Elementary School. No, it doesn't. It doesn't Unless reflect Act sixty seven. It's because that's not something that came through the town. So it would just be like us there. putting on there okay. a grant that Granville got. Like it doesn't make sense. It's not our. It's not the town that went after that grant. It was the school specifically. The school and the supervisory union filled out that application for those funds. It had nothing to do with okay. the town well, the general what, fund. What? Why? Why? What, no, wait, wait, though, Kristen, I respect and uh, I agree, uh, well, I, I understand what you're saying, but why do I have to go back to Dean Mendel, who denied me, of this number? This number, because that's it, all I asked for. It doesn't for. have to do with Dean Mendel. It had nothing to do with Dean. It came Dean from wouldn't the have school. Known. Oh, so now it doesn't have to do with Dean or the school. He would not have known. <laughs> Uh, so, Maybe it's Robert I mean, and Jamie Canardi so, or something. Robert, what I sent you, that list of what I sent you was sources of financing for the renovation of the skate space surface. That's what I sent you. It had nothing to do with how someone bought and paid for picnic tables. This was sources of financing, and that's what it says, for the renovation of the skate space surface resurfacing. Right. Okay, so there's no Wait, there's no there money in there case. for accessories. No. So, so okay. Well, you know, it's a it's a conundrum and uh, conundrum you know I, I do wish as I always yeah, say, I am all for the children, I'm all for picnic tables. It just comes down to who's paying for these things. Who is paying? So I'll have another conversation with the supervisor union tomorrow to say, listen, I, you know, I where, where did that, where? Well, maybe, maybe Kristen or Julie or Frank can tell me where I should go to find out where the $8,966 money from the, from this grant was deposited. Who got the money? I would start with Jamie Canarney, um, Robert. Do you have his contact information? Yeah, I, he gave me all this information. So now you're awesome. Saying, no, I did, well, no. My question is, where's the money? Where, where? So I'll ask if Jamie I, tomorrow I when you send the, when you send the no, fund. No, we don't have the, we, what? the money. Did not go through the town. It's all in the school. 
and that's really so you're saying now that well when you say it's the school so jamie approves the grant of nine thousand dollars and you're saying that the school approved receiving the money I would imagine what? if the school got That's the a question grant, for them. they would have approved <laughs> yeah. getting the money, and they would probably <laughs> distributed that work. money amongst many schools. Did you get the money? No, no, this is very specific to Rochester. It has nothing to do with Tunbridge and, and Chelsea. Well, if they donated, me, I know all if about they donated that type of money what? to just a skate space, we're, we're not aware of it. So, Well... Well, you know, in all goodness for the children and the development of Rochester, I'm all support of the skate space. But when it comes down to money spent, I question it. And it's like, you know, we, you know, I don't know. Maybe you guys can just afford your property taxes, your school taxes, and just drive into town. And, you know, this is a hard thing. Nine, $9,000 is a lot of money. Okay, hold so on. I'll talk hold to on, Jamie tomorrow. Hold on, yeah, talk to I, Jamie tomorrow. Okay, well, what I'm going to say is if there was a check uh, originating from the White River Supervisory Union, yep. I want to see the check and where it was deposited. Okay, good for you. That You let us know at our next <laughs> meeting how it works out. Somebody else has their hand up. For their three minutes. Well, listen, I, I appreciate everyone's time, and I'm sorry I'm upset, but Thank it's you. like, I, you know, what base? Thank you. Walter. I, I'd like to I commend bless. the town officials for the extreme patience that they've just showed in the last 10 minutes. He just hung up on us. <laughs> to something that's not germane <laughs> to the select board. Thank you, you Walter. want to take it up with me, Robert? You know where to find me. He hung up. We hung up. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. But thank you. You're on that. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, he'll watch that later. Okay, so I move that we adjourn. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Frank, now that the meeting's adjourned.